Uh, good morning and welcome back to the NPTEL course on classics in total synthesis part 1. So, we have been talking about uh, total synthesis of uh, alkaloids. We will continue our discussion on one more alkali today that is uh, uh, dendrobene and this is a, a very interesting tetracyclic compound. You can see that there are 3 5 membered rings 1, 2, 3. The third one is a lactone and second one is a substituted uh, pyrrolidine ring and the fourth one is a 6 membered ring. So, this molecule was isolated way back in 1932 almost 90, 90 years ago as the major alkaloid constituent of a Chinese ornament orchid called dendrobium nobile. Okay. It is almost 90 years ago we, it, this molecule was isolated. Uh, though the first total synthesis of dendrobene was reported in 1970s, uh, the better synthesis in terms of asymmetric as well as the shortest synthesis were reported after 90s. So, what we will do today, so we will talk about 3 total synthesis of dendrobene, one uh, supposed to be the shortest synthesis uh, less than 10 steps, the other two are asymmetric synthesis, okay, I, I should say they are chiral, chiral synthesis, chiron approach, they start with a chiral compound, okay, so they are called chiron synthesis and uh, dendrobene exhibits some interesting biological activity, so they show antipyretic and hypotensive activities. So, if you look at this molecule, from synthetic point of view as I said, so this is a tetracyclic compound that itself is a, a big challenge and uh, yeah, more importantly if you look at the number of chiral centers, you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 chiral centers okay, of which 3 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 contiguous chiral centers. That means the 6 membered ring, hmm, the 6 membered ring has all the carbons chiral, okay. All the 6 carbon atoms of the 6 membered ring are chiral, okay. First, let us start with the simplest and then uh, uh, the best synthesis so far uh, for dendrobene. So, this is the synthesis reported by Thomas Livinghouse. So he reported in 8 steps starting from 2 methyl cyclopentenone. Okay. And the key reaction, there are couple of key reactions, and the, the best one is the silver ion mediated cyclocondensation of uh, an isocyanide with an acid chloride. Okay. Cyclocondensation of an isocyanide and acyl chloride to generate uh, the dihydropyrrolidine ring, you have the 5 membered pyrrolidine ring, to generate that ring he has used this key key reaction. So, from a retrosynthetic point of view, if you look at this compound, um, his first retrosynthesis was this cleavage of this lactone. Okay. So, one side he has ester, the other side he has ketone. If you ready moment you reduce this double bond and reduce this ketone automatically the hydroxyl will cyclize and then you get the corresponding 5 membered lactone. So, that was the first major disconnection. Then the second major disconnection was the double bond, the double bond which he has introduced. Here what he wanted to do was he wanted to use a ketyl radical cyclization. So, if you put uh, a metal which can donate an electron then it will form ketyl radical that radical can undergo a 1 4 addition. Okay. The radical can undergo 1 4 addition followed by dehydration one can generate not only the 6 membered ring but also the hydroxyl group which can be dehydrated. So, that was his plan. Then as you can see the imine, okay, imine can be methylated and hydrogenated okay, to get this 5 membered ring. And this is the key transformation which he thought will be really very nice if it can be exploited in total synthesis. The cyclocondensation reaction where you have an isocyanide which on treatment with acid chloride forms this cyclic imine. Okay. Let us see how he made it and then before we move further on the total synthesis of dendrobene from Livinghouse group, 
First let us see how he prepared the two starting materials one based on the cyclopentenone other one acid chloride ok. So, he started with uh, 2 methyl cyclopentenone and then he did a 1,4 addition with lithium LiCH2 NC ok. So, he got a mixture of 1,4 uh, addition and 1,2 addition product though this 1,2 addition product was minor uh, he thought it is better to isolate. So, he quenched this with TBDMS chloride. So, when he quenched with TBDMS chloride he could get exclusively only one product. The other starting material that is acid chloride he started from ethyl acetoacetate. So, where first he did the alkylation with isopropyl bromide um, after treating with sodium ethoxide. So, you generate an anion and quench with isopropyl bromide to get this isopropyl. Then he did a quasi Favorsky rearrangement. So, what he did he first he did bromination. So, a dibromination gave this dibromo compound this upon treatment with base potassium hydroxide. The first step is a Favorsky rearrangement. So, which gives the cyclopropanone ok. Now, the second step is the base which attacks the carbonyl and this bond migrates and the bromate goes out and in the process the ester also gets hydrolyzed to get this dicarboxylic acid ok. This dicarboxylic acid if you treat with thionyl chloride you get the corresponding acid diacid chloride. Now, when you add one equivalent of methanol, one equivalent of methanol the least hindered one, least sterically hindered one is esterified leaving the other acid chloride as such which can undergo cyclocondensation with the isocyanate which we discussed in the last slide. So, the key reaction as I said it is a cyclocondensation, how does it work? So, if you have an isocyanate like this ok, then this C minus can attack the carbonyl group of acid chloride and then you get this acylenium ion. It is like you know iminium ion instead of iminium ion you have a triple bond. Now, if we have a double bond at appropriate place the double bond can neutralize the positive charge on the nitrogen ok. Then if for example, if Z is oxygen, if Z is oxygen then this is like the higher order of managed reaction is not it. Managed reaction is you have enol and then iminium ion. So, here you have a triple bond ok. So, it is like managed reaction. So, then it can cyclize to give the corresponding imine. So, that was the a key reaction which Livinghouse used in the total synthesis of dendropy. Let us see how this was successful. So, first when he did mix these two uh, in the presence of molecular sieves at uh, slightly uh, elevated temperature than room temperature, the first step was as usual was the addition of uh, attack of the nitrile and the Cl minus goes out. Now, the Cl minus which came out can attack this to neutralize the positive charge on the nitrogen. So, you get this compound ok. Now, what, what, what it can do? The lone pair on the nitrogen, lone pair on the nitrogen can push the chloride out. So, once that happens um, in the presence of silver tetrafluoroborate you generate this positive charge on the nitrogen and already you have enol TBDMS. So, that can come and neutralize the positive charge and in the process that will become keto ok. Now, you can see you started with cyclopentenone one ring. Now, the second ring is constructed ok, the second ring is constructed. So, what is left is you have to introduce a methyl group in nitrogen and also you have to reduce the amine. So, both are done <coughs> in one step actually I should say one part reaction. First, Methylation of nitrogen was done with methyl triflate. You know, methyl triflate is known to methylate and N methylation, and followed by in situ reduction of this iminium ion was done with potassium tritersary butoxy borohydrate. Okay, potassium tritersary butoxy borohydrate, so bulky one, which is uh, you know known to reduce uh, iminium ions in the presence of ketones and esters. Okay. So, now two 5 membered rings are done. So, what he needs to do 
is to connect this ok, connect this. So, he thought he can use samarium iodide, samarium iodide is a well known one electron donor. So, a ketyl radical can form that can attack that can attack this double bond in a Michael fashion. So, 6 membered ring can be formed that was his idea. But what he got was a very interesting tetracyclic compound ok. So, here it is very easy to visualize how he would have got this tetracyclic compound. Now, if you look at this particular compound ok, you can see this there are two Michael acceptors one you have alpha beta unsaturated ester ok, alpha beta unsaturated ester other one alpha beta unsaturated ketone ok. So, the Michael addition the expected one was to undergo the alpha beta unsaturated ketone ok. It was as per his plan the Michael addition was supposed to happen at alpha beta unsaturated ketone. But here if you look at this product the Michael addition took place at alpha beta unsaturated ester ok. And once that happened the hydroxyl group attacked the ester and then it formed the lactone ok. So, he thought maybe he has to work around and then uh, increase the temperature change the conditions. So, simply by rising the temperature ok simply simply by rising the temperature to ambient temperature he got the required product as the major product. So, you can see so this is the major product 53 percent and the simply reduced compound that the alpha beta unsaturated ester was reduced. So, that he got 5 percent. So, both are easily separable. So, he took the uh, required compound and then treated with thionyl chloride. So, thionyl chloride is well known for dehydration. So, it introduced a double bond. So, now you treat with bases like DBU so that the double bond can be migrated here. So, he wanted to migrate the double bond here, but what happened the double bond migrated all the way to here the tetra substitute double bond. So, ok no problem next he reduced the Adams catalyst. So, the tetra substitute double bond was reduced to give the cis substituted compound and you need this isopropyl group in the natural product alpha ok what you got is beta. So, you need alpha and you have a ketone adjacent to that. So, one should be easily isomerize or epimerize this stereo center. So, he treatment with acetic acid could epimerize that center to get the isopropyl at the required stereo position. Now, reduction with sodium borohydride came from and the hydride came from alpha. So, you got the beta alcohol and then the beta alcohol spontaneously cyclized to give the natural product dendrobium. So, overall uh, including the starting material preparation Thomas Livinghouse took about 10 longest linear steps to complete the total synthesis of dendrobium. Though uh, this is a racemic synthesis, but the shortest synthesis uh, involved a clever cyclo condensation reaction. So, now we will move to the next synthesis uh, it is a Chiron approach synthesis reported by Shah and here he started with uh, a chiral starting material called carbon ok. And the key reaction in this total synthesis was a generating a radical generating a radical next to carbonyl group because usually when you generate a radical next to carbonyl group that is not very reactive ok. So, he could successfully generate a radical next to the carbonyl group and then he carried out a 5 exo dig cyclization to get this 5 membered ring ok. This 5 membered ring he could achieve the synthesis of this 5 membered ring using 5 exo dig radical cyclization. So, let us see how he has done. So, the first retro synthesis was to cleave this ok. He wanted to introduce the nitrogen at a later stage ok and he thought this will be the precursor for that. And why this precursor that is where his key reaction that is the radical cyclization. So, once you generate a radical here if you replace the iodide then this can undergo radical cyclization to generate the 5 membered ring. So, that was the idea behind this precursor ok. No. 
Now this can be easily obtained by a 1-4 addition. So you can have the whole unit, whole unit you can add in a 1-4 fashion followed by quenching the enolate to get the iodide at alpha position, alpha to carbonyl. And this can be made from carbon which is commercially available, it is one of the monoterpenes available in plenty and not expensive. So let us see how he did the total synthesis. He started from as I said carbon, now the selectively this di substituted double bond and electron rich double bond can be reduced with either Wilkinson catalyst or with Adams catalyst to get the reduced compound. So now you have the enone and this enone it went through a very interesting reaction wherein in the first step when you treat with methyl magnesium chloride and catalytic amount of ferric chloride it undergoes it forms a dienolate okay the dienolate that is a thermodynamic dienolate and quench with TMS chloride he got this compound. This is a known reaction okay. okay. So this is the first step when you take methyl magnesium chloride and catalytic amount of ferric chloride and quench with TMS chloride you get this. This upon treatment with Lewis acid and trimethyl orthoformate okay, to give this compound. Okay, so when this happens, the whole group comes opposite to this isopropyl group. Okay, so this is how we introduce. Now, if you look at this carefully, this is the equivalent of the ester carbonyl group. In dendrobene, you need carbonyl group. So this is the equivalent of ester carbonyl group. Okay, then you need to introduce a hydroxyl group to form lactone isn't it you need to introduce a hydroxyl group to form lactone. So this upon treatment with LDA you can generate ENA here and then quench with TMS chloride followed by MCBBA you can introduce a hydroxyl group only thing is it is in the protected form OTMS. Now if you treat with PTSE that is paratoluene sulfonic acid it forms this lactol methyl so this gets hydrolyzed and then it cyclizes to form this lactol methyl ether which is quite stable. Okay. This can be this molecule can be written like this. Okay. This molecule can be written like this. Now if you look at this compound particularly the enone, okay, particularly the enone you can see the top face is blocked, the top face is blocked by the isopropyl group. So any attack on this enone has to come from the alpha phase, any attack on the enone should come from the alpha phase. So because of that when you add this the 4 carbon unit in a 1 4 fashion followed by quenching with TMS chloride you can see this 4 carbon unit comes from the less hindered alpha side. Okay. Now once you have the enol TMS in one step you can convert that into iodine. So that is the precursor required for the 5 XO radical dig cyclization. Okay. So did it work? Yes, when it was treated with tributyltin hydride with radical initiator AABN, this underwent a 5 XO dig radical cyclization to get the, the key tricyclic compound, the key tricyclic compound required for the total synthesis of dendrobium. So now what he has to do is finally combine these two to get the 5 ohm ring. So the vinyl TMS, the TMS group was removed with acetic acid to get the exocyclic double bond. Now hydroboration, okay. so before doing hydroboration, before doing hydroboration this methoxy group that is lactal methyl ether should be converted into lactone. Okay. So what he did, he treated with MCPBA, MCPBA in the presence of BF3 ethrate. So BF3 ethrate you know what happens? is if for example if you take this compound treat with BF3 ethrate the lone pair come like this and then it will go. So basically what you will get is like this oxonium ion okay like this oxonium ion you will get okay. Now when you are adding MCPBA what will happen the 
MCPBA will attack. MCPBA will attack and neutralize the positive charge. So that is what happens as you can see here. The oxonium ion is formed which, which is formed in situ was attacked by MCPBA and MCPBA also comes from the same beta cell. Okay. Then if you treat with DBU, DBU what it will do? It will pick up this hydrogen, okay? it will pick up this hydrogen and as you know the metachlor benzoic acid is a good leaving group. So it will pick up this hydrogen and you get the corresponding lactone. So in two steps the lactal methyl ether was converted into the lactone. So then as I said the next step is to introduce the 5 membered ring here. So first step was adding borane dimethyl sulfide complex. So when you do that the double bond will be hydroborate. Okay, the double bond will be hydroborate. Now when the hydroboration takes place you can see the oxygen electron rich oxygen carbonyl oxygen can immediately attack the boron isn't it? When it attacks the boron what you get is this corresponding negative charge on borane and positive charge on oxygen. Now intramolecular transfer of hydride will take place from alpha, intramolecular hydride transfer will take place from the alpha to the carbonyl so that you will get beta alcohol. Okay. This will give the beta alcohol after workup with H2O2 sodium hydroxide. Okay. You get a diol. Now what you need is one of the hydroxyl group you should convert that into nitrogen. Okay. So how this happens? You treat with methyl chloride. So when you have primary hydroxyl and secondary hydroxyl group obviously you can selectively methylate the primary one. So you do convert the primary alcohol to corresponding methylate meanwhile oxidize the secondary alcohol with chromium trioxide to get the keto. Okay, in two steps you get this. Now once you have the methylate one can easily convert that into corresponding acide. See acide is the precursor for nitrogen okay, NH. So the sodium acide displaced methyl group to get the corresponding acide. Now when you treat this with triphenyl phosphine you know this will undergo intramolecular starting a reaction. That means what will happen it forms the immunophosphorine, immunophosphorine and the with ketone what will happen it will undergo a immunobitic like. Okay. So that will give you the corresponding cyclic imine. Okay. That will give you corresponding cyclic imine. Then once you have that then sodium cyanoborohydride under acidic acid condition you can reduce the imine that means you protonate the nitrogen then you reduce with sodium cyanoborohydride. What is left now in the total sense of dendrobene is to methylate the NH. So that is simple if you treat with formaldehyde and formic acids you can easily methylate the NH to get the corresponding N methyl group. So this is the second total synthesis which I discussed about dendrobene. So which took about uh, 19 steps and it started with the commercially available monoterpene called CARO. The third total synthesis uh, very interesting total synthesis reported by Samir Zad involved two key reactions. One a Poisson Khan reaction to construct two 5 membered rings. The both the 5 membered rings were constructed using Poisson Khan reaction. And second one is using a radical reaction to open the cyclobutane, radical reaction to open the cyclobutane of another commercially available monoterpene called verbenone to get this isopropyl go. Okay. So he also took about 19 steps to complete the total synthesis. But these two key reactions were very, very important in the total synthesis of dendrobium. Okay. So his idea is as I said this is the key reaction that where you use Poisson Khan reaction to get the two 5 member rings and this can be obtained from the corresponding you know uh, cyclic carbamate okay. and the cyclic carbamate he got it from this verbenol, okay, verbenol by a radical cyclization step. Okay. So let us see how he has done and uh, you know what is Poisson Khan reaction. 
if you have a triple bond and double bond and if you treat with dicobalt octacarbonate in the presence of carbon monoxide you can get cyclopentenone. So, it is a very well known reaction for making highly substituted cyclopentenones ok and not only cyclopentenone the depending on the nature of substituent the cyclopentenone can be fused with other other things ok. So, now he started with verbenol which was obtained from verbenone in one step once you have the verbenol or you can also get verbenol for directly from alpha pinene in one step. So, then you protect this uh, verbenol with uh, carbonyl diimidazone ok. So, you get uh, this intermediate. Now, if you add methyl hydroxylamine, so methyl hydroxylamine is a good nucleophile it attacks and then imidazole is a good leaving group. So, you get this. Now, the NOH, the OH should be converted into a, a decent leaving group so that you can generate N radical. So, what was done was convert the OH into O benzoate by treating with benzyl chloride and you get the radical precursor ok. Once you have this radical precursor you treat with radical initiator that is AIBN azobis isobutronitrile and tributyltinhydride you generate the radical and that radical is like this ok. First you generate the radical and this radical adds in a phi exo trig fashion phi exo trig fashion to generate the tertiary radical. Once the tertiary radical is generated now the tertiary radical can open up the strained four membered ring. You have strained four membered ring, the strained four membered ring can be opened by the formation of this tertiary radical and when it does that what you get is a more stable tertiary radical. So, this again it will pick up hydrogen from tributyltinhydride and it will form isopropyl and that is how in one step cleverly ok Zamirzad converted this radical uh, precursor to a bicyclic compound ok. Then you can hydrolyze this ok. So, the cyclic carb carbamate you hydrolyze to get the corresponding amino alcohol and then NH can be propargylated uh, by treatment with uh, potassium carbonate and propargyl bromide and the free hydroxyl should be protected. So, that was protected as uh, acetate then he carried out the key reaction that is the Poisson Kahn reaction. So, the Poisson Kahn reaction worked very well and as you can see here it gave the key tricyclic compound uh, very nicely and two 5 member rings are formed using Poisson Kahn reaction ok. Then the double bond of alpha beta unsaturated ketone the 5 member ring can be reduced under hydrogenation condition. Then what you have to do if you look at is you need to introduce an ester group is not it you need to introduce an ester group. Now, if you look at that carbon that carbon uh, unless you introduce a functional group you cannot introduce a carbonyl group. So, if you have to introduce a functional group it is important you introduce a double bond here ok then you can do a 1 4 addition. For introducing the double bond you have to pick up this hydrogen ok this hydrogen that means you have to generate more substituted enolate is not it. The more substituted enolates are generally formed by treatment with trimethyl silyl iodide and hexamethyl disilicin ok. Once you make the enol TMS then treat with phenyl cyanyl chloride you can introduce the selenogroup selenol group at that carbon. Then simple oxidation with the MCPVA first it will form phenyl selenol oxide followed by elimination you introduce the double. Once you have the double bond next is very simple you have to introduce a carbonyl group. Uh, one carbon carbonyl group and the best reagent one can think of is cyanide. So, treatment with the diethyl aluminum cyanide uh, smoothly underwent a 1 4 addition to introduce the cyanide. Now, you can see the cyanide and then acetate both are in alpha position both are in the same side. So, it should be possible to cyclize to get the corresponding lactone. Nevertheless, before you do it you should remove the unwanted keto group you have a keto group that you do not want. So, reduce with sodium borohydrate to get the alcohol and once you have alcohol one can do deoxygenation using again radical radical reaction convert this hydroxyl into xanthate ok. One can convert this into xanthate and or you know here you treat with this corresponding thioacid chloride then treat with tributyltinhydrate and AABN you remove the hydroxyl group ok. 
The next step as I said you have to connect these two to form the lactone and that is done by treatment with sodium methoxide and methanol. So, sodium methoxide methanol first it hydrolyzes the acetate, first it hydrolyzes the acetate to get the alcohol, but unfortunately it also epimerizes the carbon bearing cyanide ok. No problem, now if you treat with paratolvin sulfonic acid, paratolvin sulfonic acid the OH will attack the cyanide to form the corresponding amidate. Now since you are adding water and then doing the reaction dioxane, this can get hydrolyzed to give the corresponding lactone ok, that is nothing but the natural product dendropyl. Again Samirza took about 19 steps, but remember this involved uh, chiral starting material and also involved 2 key reactions. One is the Poisson Kahn reaction to get 2 5 ohm rings and the second one is opening of the cyclobutane of verbenone by radical reaction to introduce the isopropyl group required in the cor with correct stereochemistry ok. So, with this uh, we have completed uh, total synthesis of 2 alkaloids and we will discuss few more alkaloids in the next few classes. Thank you.